Any given point contains the entire universe. And the universe is a point anywhere. Every atom is a cosmos. The more you zoom in, the more you are zooming out. There's no such thing as big or small. There's no such thing as life or death. There's no such thing as important or unimportant. Good or bad. Empty or full. Everyone you love, you will see again and everywhere you have been. You have been before and will go there again. Inside particles of dog shit. Or on the helix of the DNA of a flower? All of our nightmares and all of our fantasies are happening all the time. Everywhere. Forever. I plead my pants in church when I was in the second grade. I thought that... Probably... God was too pure to put bathrooms in his home. So I held it... Sitting cross-legged... Alone. In a back pew. Right before I gave up holding it. I had a fantasy about being two inches tall. I would dig tunnels all around the church. 
creating a solitary, vast, labyrinthal fort. There would be a spot where I could play miniature video games, a spot where I would go swimming through tubes, a room for making wild drawings and a maze of tunnels to explore and walk through all day. When I would come out of the tunnels and into the vastness of the church, no one would see me, except maybe the priest, giving me a reassuring wink, and I would enjoy the beauty of the shiny pews, the giant marble altar with the giant people gathered around it. As soon as there was danger, I would slip back into one of my tunnels. It was while thinking about these things that a small river of urine started dripping down my leg and onto the church floor. A teacher spotted me and took me outside. It was a nice day and I was excited to go home and see my mom. to this island right off the coast from the city where they make that Thai hot sauce. There were thousands of rusted boats and lots of trash in the harbor. On the island, though, was a beautiful temple and they let us stay overnight. A nun who had studied at Thalmasach University and spoke good English showed us around. The last place she took us to was a small, concrete room with a rotting dead body laying on the floor. The nun said, This is where you meditate to overcome fear of death. She said, This was my mother. In the morning, at Orium, a kitten's mewing woke us up. We thought that, maybe, that kitten was the abbot of the temple in feline form, telling us to get up. We put on white robes, and went down into a dark cave with the other monks. There was a lot of sitting, and standing, and singing just like church later we rented a moped and drove around the island the other side was full of trash and flies and run down shacks I've written this story many times before and every time I write it it is different
when we were in our early 20s. Our friend Spanky moved into his dead grandma's house. And we used to party there a lot. It was cold, falling apart and no one made any repairs. Or bothered to update any of the old furniture. White shag carpeting. Padded toilet seats. Mirrored walls. Old tattered couches and glass tables with wood bongs, empty bags of drugs, and dick drawings scattered all over. One winter night, after a party had ended, me and Dave were talking about our ancestors when a strange light circled us and we became possessed by the spirits of the house's previous inhabitants. We took all the knickknacks in the living room, old books, pipes, stuffed animals, trophies, crosses cigarette packs and beer cans and placed them on a mantle above a boarded up fireplace in the basement we worked quietly for about an hour lining everything up symmetrically and by size and color When we finished, an evil energy flowed out from us, into the room, and through the objects. We went upstairs to finish our drinking. The next time I came over to Spanky's, the altar had vanished, like it was never there. In the house that I grew up in, there is a room that doesn't exist. It is to the left of the back door, right next to a cabinet where my mom keeps phone books and old tin cups. To get to the room, you go through a long hallway. It is dark with white walls. No windows and red molding. Only one old light bulb lights everything up. Inside are dusty paintings and wax busts of all my ancestors. 
There are images of disheveled hunters in a winter forest. Peasants drinking beer after a harvest. Sailors vomiting off the deck of an old ship. Sneering slave owners and sad farmers. A man playing a large drum. And a woman playing the piano. There is a melting wax statue of a mustachy old man, with a large nose, holding a plow. Most of the figures, though, are too melted to make out that they were ever human. They are large, multicolored blobs of wax dripping off of their plinths. sometimes I go into this room when no one else is at home I lay down on the cold old wooden floor step at the ceiling and think about nothing in particular.